English. First, you'll learn about. Now let's talk about some more tricky English. First, you'll learn about gerunds and infinitives. Then you'll learn how to politely make requests and ask for permission. Two things that are often confusing for English learners. In this week's video lectures, you will learn what can be tricky about these points and how to avoid making some common mistakes. Make sure to do all of the exercises, and don't forget to have fun. In this video, we're going to do a basic review of gerunds and infinitives, and listen to an example of gerunds and infinitives in use. Now, let's start with a basic review of what gerunds and infinitives are. Gerunds are words that look like verbs ending in ing, eating, dancing, studying, but they do not express a tense and are used like nouns. They can be the subject or object of a sentence. For example, we enjoy laughing with our friends. Notice that enjoy is the verb and laughing is the gerund. Laughing is the object of enjoy. We enjoy dinner with our friends. Notice how laughing in the first sentence is like a noun and can be replaced with a noun like dinner. Infinitives, on the other hand, look like the base form of a verb. Drink. Sentence is like a noun and can be replaced with a noun like dinner. Infinitives, on the other hand, look like the base form of a verb: drink, see, believe, but they are not used as the main verb of a sentence, and so they also do not express the tense in a sentence. Commonly, infinitives follow to: to drink, to see, to believe. Example: I want to ask the teacher a question. Notice that want is the main verb, and to ask is the infinitive. Now let's look to an example of how someone might use both gerunds and infinitives in a real-life situation. The speaker is Angela, who has a very important event to plan. Listen to her give instructions to several of the people helping her plan an awards dinner. As you listen, see if you can catch how many gerunds and how many infinitives are used. Okay, everyone, attention. I hate to tell you this, but we only have five hours to prepare this room for our event tonight. To place the podium center stage would be best. Hannah, please put all the medals and prizes right behind the speaker to make it easy for him to reach them. Unfortunately, we must postpone setting up the microphone. We don't have all the equipment yet. We'll need to quickly hook up the microphone later. And I know Linda wants to arrange the flowers. Linda, you're good at decorating. Would you also consider setting the silverware and napkins on the tables? But I can do it if you don't have enough time. Jackson, please tell the band to set up by the dance floor, not on the stage. And would you mind showing the caterers where the kitchen is? Planning this event would not be possible without you. I love working with you guys. Now let's get to work. Okay, how many gerunds and infinitives did you count? Did you count six gerunds and seven infinitives? Well done.
continue to part two, where you'll learn about the different uses of infinitives and gerunds, as well as common mistakes with them. Gerunds and gerunds and infinitives, part two. Hello, class. Welcome to the second video on gerunds and infinitives. In this video, you're going to learn about the tricky ways that gerunds and infinitives are sometimes used in sentences. We'll look at some examples from the first video and also take a look at some new examples. So let's begin. In the first video, you saw lots of examples of gerunds and infinitives, and this was the most common form, a verb plus a gerund. Let's look at the examples again. Unfortunately, we must postpone setting up the microphone. Would you also consider setting the silverware and napkins on the tables? And would you mind showing the caterers where the kitchen is? I love working with you guys. Notice that in all of these sentences, you have a verb plus a gerund. And remember, a gerund is a verb in the ing form, but that acts as a noun. We also saw this form, a verb plus an infinitive. I hate to tell you this, and I know Linda wants to arrange the flowers. Again, here we see a verb plus the infinitive, two plus the base form of a verb. Now let's talk about some of the ways that you can avoid making mistakes, starting with number one. Use the correct verb with the gerund or infinitive. Take a look at this example. I dislike to go to the mall alone. Is it correct to use dislike followed by an infinitive form? No, it should be going, the gerund form. I dislike going to the mall alone. How about this sentence? Jerry promised meeting me at 4 p.m. Can a gerund be used with promise? No, it needs to be an infinitive form. Jerry promised to meet me at 4 p.m. But what about this sentence? The plane began to fly. Hmm, this looks correct. Began followed by the infinitive to fly. But this also looks correct. The plane began flying. Hmm. Began can be followed by a gerund as well. Now, why are these both correct? Unfortunately, there really isn't a simple rule to help you with all of the different verbs. But here's a chart that you can study. In the first column are First column are verbs that can be used only with infinitive forms. In the second column, verbs that can be used with gerunds. And in the third column, verbs that can be used with both gerunds and infinitives. Now, it can be difficult remembering all of these different verbs, but it'll get easier if you practice. Now let's keep going. Number now it can be difficult remembering all of these different verbs with gerunds and
And in the third column, verbs that can be used with both gerunds and infinitives. Now, it can be difficult remembering all of these different verbs, but it'll get easier if you practice. Now let's keep going. Number two, make sure to use gerunds after prepositions. Here's the example from the previous video. Linda, you're good at decorating. At is a preposition and it's followed by a gerund. Now what do you think of this sentence? Timmy is happy about win first place. Well, about should not be followed by win. Timmy is happy about winning first place is the correct way to form this sentence where a gerund follows a preposition. Number three, place the infinitive after the verb object combination. In other words, if there is a verb plus object combination, Make sure the infinitive goes after the object, not after the verb. Here are some examples from the previous video. But we only have five hours to prepare this room for our event tonight. Have is the verb plus the object and to prepare comes after this combination. Jackson, please tell the band to set up by the dance floor, not on the stage. Here we also have a verb plus object combination followed by to set up. Let's look at some more examples. Here we also have a verb plus object combination followed by to set up. Let's look at some more examples. Our boss told to finish the project by next week. Do you see a problem in the sentence? Yes. We have to finish without an object. Our boss told to finish us the project by next week. Now here we have an object, but it's in the wrong place. This is the correct sentence. Our boss told us to finish the project by next week. Here's the verb, object combination, plus to finish, our infinitive form. Great.
The fourth thing to remember is to use gerunds and infinitives in subject positions correctly. So far, we've only seen examples of gerunds and infinitives coming after verbs, but they can also be used as subjects of sentences. Like here, planning this event would not be possible without you. Planning is a gerund and it's the subject of the sentence. Take a look at this sentence. Do you think it's correct? Swimming, my favorite form of exercise. Hmm. Well, it's actually missing a verb. Swimming is my favorite form of exercise. Swimming is a subject. It needs a verb. So don't forget to add a verb. Now let's talk about how infinitive Swimming is a subject. It needs. Well, it's actually missing a verb. Swimming is my favorite form. of exercise. Swimming is a subject. It needs a verb. So don't forget to add a verb. Now let's talk about how infinitives can be subjects in sentences. Remember this one? To place the podium, center stage would be best. Here's another example. To leave now is foolish. Both of these sentences are correct, but they do sound very formal. To use a more common form, use it as the subject and move the infinitive to the end of the sentence. It is foolish to leave now. This is a much more common form. Now I'd like for you to try. Take a look at this sentence again. To place the podium center stage would be best. I'd like for you to think of how this could be said in a more common form. Here we go. It would be best to place the podium center stage. Great job. Let's move on to number five. Remember, infinitives can be used to show purpose. Infinitives can be used to show purpose like because. Here's an example from part one. Hannah, please put all the medals and prizes right behind the speaker to make it easy for him to reach them. To make is the same as saying, because it will make. Let's take a look at another example. Jimmy wears a suit because he wants to look professional. Because he wants to look shows purpose. Let's try changing this to an infinitive. Make sure to use look. Jimmy wears a suit to look professional. These two sentences are saying the same thing. To look shows purpose.
The last thing you need to remember is that adverbs can split infinitives. With an infinitive like to hook up, you can add an adverb such as quickly. To quickly hook up. This example comes from the past video. We'll need to quickly hook up the microphone later. The adverb for the. So that's all I have for you on gerunds and infinitives. With an infinitive like to hook up, you can add an adverb such as quickly. To quickly hook up. This example comes from the past video. We'll need to quickly hook up the microphone later. The adverb is added after to. Let's take a look at another example. They seem to like each other. Hmm. We can add an adverb right here between the to and like, such as really. They seem to really like each other. It is important to efficiently study for the final. We have efficiently as the adverb splitting to study. We could also say thoroughly or diligently to diligently study. So that's all I have for you on.